Hi everyone, my name is Erdem Ünal and today I'm going to uh, talk about our work which is named as Incorporating Features of Distribution and Progression for Automatic Macam Classification and this work is done with my colleagues Boris Boskurt and Kemal Karosmanoğlu. So the outline of the talk is going to be as follows. First of all, I would like to give some uh, information about why we are doing this kind of work. We are doing uh, Macam classification, so, and what is our motivation on that. And we'll, I'll be discussing uh, about our data uh, methodology, and I will give information about our experiments, results, and future work. So uh, for more cultural and theoretical perspective, uh, our motivation is basically on uh, Macam music being not widely studied. So we would like to, a scientist study which is not studied well. So and we also know that the Macam music itself is not fully explained with a solid theory. And we need to solve the mismatch between the practice and theory also. On more commercial perspective of view, uh, also we would like to uh, organize large collections of data and maybe more commercial motivation might be we, need, we would like to design some, support, design some top supportive tools like for educational perf uh, purposes for composers, students, teachers or maybe for amateur musicians. So here is basically the stuff that we work on. This is our data. This is everything we have in our hand. And this is going to be uh, presented by uh, Kemal Karosmanol in Izmir 2012 this year. Uh, it's named as a Turkish Makam Music Symbolic Database for Music Information Retrieval, SIMTR. And here is basically the Makam classes that we work on. There are 13 uh, classes and around uh, 877 songs. And we selected these Makams because they are most uh, frequent that we can find some data on. And some are colored with the same color, which we think they are more confusing. So we would like to test our algorithms, the performance of algorithms on that confusing Makams also, which are Beati and Ushak, Husseini and Muhayyar, and Mahur and Rast. So our classification approach is going to be also presented in Izmir this year. So it's named as Ngram based statistical Makam detection on Makam music in Turkey using symbolic data. So we use a slightly smaller database because the availability uh, while doing, doing our experiments. Uh, on that paper, we compare the effect of different representations. First of all, we uh, would like to uh, implement some earlier work by uh, Alp Kocak and Yedik, which is the 12 tet representation. And then we wanted to show the performance of using comma RLSG representation. And also, we need to also uh, move on the audio domain. So we would like to see if our uh, symbolic uh, rep representation algorithms can work on audio. Uh, to see that, we uh, try to represent the data on more melodic progression uh, side. And we uh, named this as comma delta representation. I'll be discussing that a little bit more detailed. So here is the methodology that we use. So we have all those Macam pieces. And we use the leave one out strategy. For each, each time of an experiment, we left one of the music pieces out as our test. And we, uh, for training, we use Ngram models. So Ngram models are basically very uh, easy to implement. However, uh, working on them with very high e efficiency requires a lot of attention. So we need to do, uh, perform some smoothing, universal background modeling type of uh, approach. Uh, which is basically done uh, a lot in natural language processing. And after we trained our models, basically we have uh, the model set in our database and the left, left out piece, we basically calculate the perplexity and perplexity, perplexity means like a statistical distance. Uh, it calculates the likelihood of a model creating another sequence. So this is going to be our similarity score between the input sequence and the models in the database. So this, is, this can be skipped. I'll be uh, talking about more uh, in detail the perplexity. It's basically 2 to the minus uh, cross entropy. So it's basically XIs are drawn from P, another model. It predicts how well P is generated by the Q model. And in our case, we would like to test how well the node progressions are uh, predicted by the Macam models in our database. And for all these uh, calculations, we used SRLM toolkit, which is a very powerful toolkit that is being used for natural language processing. 
So in our Izmir paper, this is the results that we showed. So uh, for different length of engrams, which is one, two, or three, uh, and different representations, we were able to get around 88% uh, MACAM detection accuracy for n equal to three. And we also uh, showed that uh, if you would like to work on the audio domain, of course these experiments are done in symbolic domain, uh, we can achieve around 80% accuracy with using n equal to three. And here our contribution is basically uh, we would like to incorporate progression related macro information which is basically operating on local points where the macams are more distinct. This is uh, done by only uh, observation of course. And we would like to introduce some hierarchical clustering algorithms. So this is done by basically grouping similar macams together first and then we train MACAM groups and test accordingly. And after that, we use some, use, uh, we use some knowledge based rules for detailed classification of uh, next levels. So for local progression information, this is what, what basically we're trying to show here. For example, Mohayar and Husseini MACAMs are almost very similar to each other using very similar uh, pitch classes. As you can see, uh, this is a normalized uh, pitch histogram on time. As you can see, the uh, Muhayyar uh, Makam and the Husseini Makam's movements are very similar, but the difference is Muhayyar starts from a little bit higher uh, pitch uh, profile so that we can maybe use this information for further classification of these two Makams. So in order to test that, we, 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 have, done, we have done some uh, three-way experiments. This is first one is model being derived from the whole of the uh, whole uh, music piece and we tested against the whole. And then we just tested only the first quarter of the music piece against the whole melody. And we also tried uh, the first quarter versus the first, uh, versus the first quarter to see how well this performs. Basically, this is uh, just to show that whole versus whole, which means that uh, modeling everything from the whole of the melody and testing against the whole is uh, giving around 87.9% accuracy. And when we uh, just move, uh, concentrate on the first part of the melody, actually this was also mentioned earlier in uh, Mr. Okan's uh, presentation, we can see that we have more Macam specific related information in the first part of the melody. Uh, we were able to get around one to two percent uh, improvement in our uh, Macam de detection accuracy, but we also have some, we still have problems uh, trying to classify these very similar Macams which are as you can see, the red ones are the confusion matrix between the Bayati and Ushak. Uh, for Bayati, we have around only 47% uh, retrieval accuracy, recall accuracy. And for Husseini and Muhayyar, we are also in trouble here. As you can see, there's, uh, the confusion there is around 66.2%. For Mahur and Rust, uh, even though we thought that they, they will be mixing a lot, we were able to somehow capture the uh, melodic progressions better with using engrams, so they were, uh, they were, we were able to separate them with around 94.4%. So in order to tackle the challenges created by the confusing macans, we tried a hierarchical approach. And this is done by basically first uh, uh, clustering the macams, which we are safe as single macams, and uh, confusing macams as separate classes. For example, there are uh, eight cl uh, seven classes over there, and Ushak Bayati is regarded as one macam, Husseini Muhayyar another macam, and also Rast and Mahur another macam. So there are three uh, classes over here. And when one of the pieces are uh, defined by one of them, we make another step further to make a hierarchical uh, classification. So we hope that we will be able to separate them uh, with better accuracy. So this uh, theoretical clues that we use for uh, segmentation of macams are as follows. For example, for Rust and Mahur, the final uh, is supposed to be or more likely to be around G4. So this information is very distinctive. So if one of the macams are de defined as uh, this confusing macams, we, check, we just check to see if the final note is G4. And if it's G4, it's uh, Rust or Mahur. So after this decision, we need to uh, make the final decision whether the macam is uh, Rust or Mahur. And this is done by basically using another feature which we call the start index. 
uh, that concentrates more on the uh, starting point of the uh, Macam piece. And these uh, two features show that the graph uh, of the samples from two classes, as you can see, the Mahur samples uh, tend to lie more on the top and the rust uh, samples tend to lie on more on the bottom. And this green line basically perfectly separates these two classes. And uh, for uh, training this green line, you can use any kind of classifier, like logistic regression, support vector machines, or whatever. It, it, for this kind of uh, segmentation, it will work just perfectly. But uh, for example, this is also a good example, Hussein and Muhayyar. Also, the start index, uh, the, yellow, the green line is able to uh, perfectly, not perfectly, but almost perfectly able to separate the two classes from each other. But when we come to Beyati and Ushak, as you can see, it's not a good segmentation. We have a lot of uh, overlap between the samples and uh, we're not really sure what kind of separation we can do over here. Maybe we need to introduce more features uh, on Beyati and Ushak. And this is something left for future work. So here's, uh, here are some results. So the first part of the segmentation, as you, as you remember, we have the single macams and the double, double macams together. Uh, so we have 10 classes. It starts for, for, with Beati Ushak. It's one single macam. Uh, here on the middle, Husseini and Muhayyar, one single macam. Rust and Mahur, one single macam. We can see that uh, defining uh, these single, single and double macams is uh, not a hard thing, so we have around 94% of defining these uh, initial classes. But when we move to the uh, hierarchical part to define whether the Macam belongs to the first or the second part of the double Macams, uh, our performance, uh, performance drops down to 90.9%. And if you want to see the performance of Beyati and Ushak, as you can see, it's 57.1 and 64.7. It's not as bad as the previous one, but it's like there's some improvement, but it, it's not enough yet. So for Hussein and Muhayyar, we are better also. For Ras and Mahur, we didn't have any problem before. Now it's better also. So here is the comparison between the straightforward algorithm and the hierarchical approach. We have improvement for uh, almost everything except for the Ushak Makam. So while trying to uh, better predict the Beati Makam, we have some trade-off on the Ushak Makam. Uh, the performance of Ushak drops around 8.3%, but on overall we have 2.3% uh, better classification. So for future work, of course, we would like to work on a larger database. Our database is increasing every day. And we would like to more concentrate on Ushak and Beati classification. It's going to be a problematic one. Uh, we are having trouble defining the correct features here. So we need to talk with like experts a lot. So we need to discuss uh, whether we can find an accurate feature for that or not. Or we might uh, basically blame the Macam itself and say, say that this Macam doesn't exist, maybe. And maybe we can more concentrate on the melodic phrase analysis and to see uh, larger segment, melodic segments might give more information about the Macam itself. So maybe we can incorporate some rhythmic information. We're not really sure if rhythmic information might give extra information, but it's it worth trying, I guess. Also, uh, as a person that comes from a signal processing background, I would like to test everything with audio. And this is going to be a very big challenge for us. And basically, this is what I would like to say. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer.